Good evening. I want to welcome all of those of you who are here in the sanctuary worshiping with us this evening, as well as those who are participating remotely on Zoom. This evening, we're going to be remembering the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ in scripture and in song. We are not using a printed bulletin this evening. All the lyrics of the hymns, all the readings will be appearing on the monitor up here to my left, um, as, as well as responsive readings. Those of you who are watching on Zoom are invited to sing and speak along with us, uh, as long as your microphones are muted when you do so. After each section of the text describing Jesus' path to the cross, we're going to put out one of the candles until there is only one left burning, the Christ candle. At that point, you're going to hear a song that was inspired by the seven last words of Jesus from the cross, and then the Christ candle will also be extinguished. In the darkness, you will hear a bell toll 33 times, once for each year of Jesus' life, and then you'll hear the scripture account of the handling of Jesus' body. We'll sit in silence and darkness for a few moments of reflection, then we'll sing, Were You There? There will be a closing prayer and a benediction, and after that, we will depart from the sanctuary in silence. So now on behalf of our combined churches, uh, Greece Baptist Church, Greece United Methodist Church, Messiah Lutheran Church, and Trinity Episcopal Church, I welcome you to our Good Friday service. We're going to begin with a few moments to center our thoughts as Haley plays our prelude.
As you are able, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we join together in our call to worship this evening. You were a man of suffering, acquainted with grief, loved and despised in equal measure. When we, like Peter, deny you by word or action, forgive us. This we pray in the name of the man from Nazareth, the one who lived with a great passion for your way, the one whose death is nigh, the one who taught his friends to pray, saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our first hymn this evening, O Sacred Head Now Wound. Yeah. Uh... 
Gather round. I have a story to tell of one who reached inside himself and took a handful of love like a pile of stardust and said, this is for you. It is all you need. It, was, it is all you will ever need. There is enough here to change the whole world. Take it. Many laughed at him, mocked him and ignored the invitation, but some dared to take it. And those who did noticed something about this love. They found they could do what the gift giver could do. They could stand with the lost, welcome the traveler, eat with the hungry. They found themselves doing what the man first did to them, give something of themselves to others. They became like the man, offering themselves. And as they offered themselves, others took the invitation. And many still do, and many still trust. It is enough to change the whole world.
we share together the litany. Lord Jesus, by your cross and resurrection, deliver us. by your witness to the truth, by your passion and your death, deliver us. by your victory over the grave, deliver us. from the lust of power, deliver us. from the conspiracy of silence, deliver us. from the worship of weapons, deliver us. from the slaughter of innocents, from the nightmare of hunger, deliver us. from the peace that is no peace, from security that is no security. Deliver us. From the politics of terror. Deliver us. From the plundering of the earth's resources. Deliver us. From the dispossession of the poor. Deliver us. From the despair of this age. Deliver us. And by the light of the gospel. Give us peace. By the good news for the poor. By your healing of our wounds, give us peace. By our faith in your word, give us peace. By hunger and thirst for justice, give us peace. And by the coming of your kingdom, give us peace. Amen. Our next hymn is Lead Me to Calvary. We find it in the gray hymnals is number 211. We're going to sing just two verses of this tonight, the first verse and the fourth verse. Lead me to Calvary. You may remain seated as we sing. Now the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of John. At that time, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. 
and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that had been spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the leaders that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the women who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of his man, man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the servants and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teachings. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple, where all the people come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus said, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. 
And Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. But they replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the people again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? The crowd said, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. And when the chief priests and police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. Then people then answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and he asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate said, do you refuse, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus said, you would have no power over me unless I had, it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. And from then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the people cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. And when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone of Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the people, here is your king. And the crowd said, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified.
So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate said, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. This crown of thorns Upon your head All the power of the universe And humble sacrifice Your earthly form Upon this holy cross The least measure of your love For me And here am I in my fallen world It's the only world I know Knowing who I am You bring heaven's mercy to me This crown of thorns That I have placed upon your head All the power that creates the universe Gentle beneath my hand Your broken form That I have placed upon this cross Submitting to this earthly pain Out of love for me
Here am I in my fallen world The only world I know And knowing who I am Even knowing who I am Especially knowing who I am You bring heaven's mercy to me Since it was the day of preparation, the people did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the authorities, he asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
Let us pray. O oh God, thank you for being with us in this wondering moment where we stand poised between life and death, filled to the brim with sorrow, filled with thoughts of what has been and what lies before us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you for our friend Jesus, who was a gift to the world a gift in each of our lives. Comfort us even as we are shaken by the horror of these last hours. Be our friend in this time of sorrow and sustain us in the days to come. And now may our God bless you and keep you. May the very face of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's presence embrace you and give you eternal peace. Amen. Let us depart in peace and silence.